Hello, welcome to my review of my custom made World War One heavy uh, Mark IV heavy tank. This tank was made um, during uh, World War One, and it was the first ever tank to be produced, and was used with the um, on the Battle of Somme because you know they were just dug down in the trenches on each side, and it was very ineffective. Lots of people died because of the very ineffective strategy. So the British Air Force came up with the idea of making something armored that you know going around the ground with treads and everything so this was and was this was the result and it proved really effective so that's why you know the thing like with tanks have actually continued because it was because it was actually proved effective so now from that I'm sitting here with a you know from effective warfare I'm now sitting here with a little model that I'm going to review and uh, first I'm going to view the actual tank and I'm just going to take this little thing away because it just takes up space so you can focus more on the actual tank so first of all I'm just going to show you the side and you can see the sides, I got a very nice shaping on these sides here just like the tread section actually was I think, it looks really good I think and we have the cannons on the side like that, and we have the flag on the front there, it looks very nice I think <coughs> really like how these turned out, these sides uh, the treads do spin even though it's kind of hard because the gear should be like a little bit bigger back here to make it really good because now it kind of get stuck in there like that so that kind of stinks but it doesn't bother me too much since I'm not playing with it <laughs> and now let's take a look uh, let's take a look at the front you can see there we've got the two viewports let's see if we can get op open this one up I usually destroy something when I try to open it when I try to open these but there we go it worked nice yeah there we go uh, one on each side as you can see there, there's some more detailing there. And on the other side here, you can see we have the like two grill parts. It's like a little bit more detail, and the bar, six six uh, six stud long um, bar there. And we also have the underside. Oh, I forgot to zoom out. There we go. On the side here, you can see the sheet slopes here that are attached to the bottom of the front. This fits very well with plate. And here I'm missing one of those uh, parts. I'm just missing a part here, obviously. And if we move on to the back, you can see we have the hatches. We have two hatches on, you know, first hatch here. First, sorry, two hatches on the bottom here. That does open up. We thought this breaks off a bit sometimes. There we go. They open up and have some storage space in, storage space in there. And this is going all weird. And we have one up here, and that's a bit trickier to open though. So I'm not going to try that, I'm probably just going to break something. And that uh, leads us to the top, we will have the hatch, we made the main hatch basically where they got in and out from the tank. <coughs> and we also have these nice um, things that were used to tie things to the tank and different stuff. Yeah, most likely, mostly to you know, actually attach things and everything so there's nothing to fall off because the whole idea with this tank, the design, why the treads, so you can see I missed a part here uh, and the two sides are identical so I don't really have to talk about anything on this side here the reason why they were shaped like this is because they could do, it could go <coughs> like, it could go like this oh, not gonna, one, so there we go it could go like this and then just drive down and actually continue so it actually didn't fall over, if you compare it to how the tanks are different to like a World War II tank. If this angle angle would be to happen with a Panzer II, the Panzer II would be, yeah, just would not work. But the Mark IV, um, you could they could go, you know, they could climb really really high. So it basically fills the purpose very well as well, and it looks really cool. I think it, I I don't know, it's just something about it that really, it's really. It looks nice, it's very nice, and it's my first World War, World War One tank, and World War One vehicle actually ever I ever made. So I really really happy with how it actually turned out. And then, then we have this, which was attached more than it wasn't just like a thing that you like a um, trailer or something like that. It was actually mounted a bit better, but I want to include it because I think it looks like a nice detail. And what it was initially, it had a much better. It's really connected, and I think it was to help the steering a bit. 
Oh yeah, you can yeah imagine yourself. So this was not how it was connected, just like that. It was actually built in, so it actually helped with the steering a bit. <coughs> From what I have been told. Um, but yeah, basically the reason why I didn't didn't actually mount it like it was uh, that is because I didn't want to change that too much because that model had that. It was a couple of different models they made of this tank. There was the male and the female and the hermaphrodite model. Because the hermaphrodite is, you know, basically uh, the two models combined, sort of. <coughs> um, I didn't want I, the, I didn't want to do the female. I wanted to make, do the male version, and that did not have this. The specific one I made didn't have this, but I still want to include it. So I did it like this. So. It looked good from the side with it attached and it also looked good without it so I think I got got it really really good uh, I, th I think I got it really good I think I got it just about right something that I really like about it as well is that I got the size really really well well it would be really really bad if I did because this tank was really really big so you can see there actually looks really good scale wise I'm oh, sorry this is just a World War 2 figure because I don't have any World War 1 figures I can just tell you, it was 2.43, well, 2 meters and 43 centimeters high, and this thing was 8 meters long. Let's go out in your backyard and count that up. It was huge. It weighed uh, almost 28 tons, ton, and was 4 meters uh, wide. So, um, it was really big, really, really big as well. Um, and yeah, that was about it. I'm just gonna keep on mumbling about something. And this, by the way, this was this is filmed with my new video camera, and I think the quality looks it's just superb. I'm so happy with it. I'm gonna talk about it a bit more in my update video that I'm gonna do uh, during the week here. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and goodbye.